Welcome back. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 11.4 using integration. 11.4 represents chapter 11, section 4 of the Pearson A level Master Applied Master Year 1 textbook. Let's have a look at the key facts of this section. Firstly, you've got S is displacement, V is velocity, A is acceleration, and T is time. Given the displacement S, which is a function in terms of time T, the velocity is given by ds over dt, the acceleration is given by dv over dt, alternatively d2s over dt squared. Now if you are given the acceleration to work out the velocity, we're going backwards now, we have to integrate the acceleration. So the velocity is the area under the acceleration curve and the horizontal axis. Given the velocity, you can work out the displacement by integrating the velocity. So the displacement is the area under the velocity curve and the horizontal axis. These are the key facts of 11.4 using integration. I'll be implementing these key facts within three exam style questions. Let's have a look at exam style question one. A particle P travels in a straight line such that its acceleration at time T seconds is given by A equal T minus three in brackets meters per second per second. The velocity of P at time T seconds is V meters per second. When T is equal zero, V is equal four. Find part A V in terms of T. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. Now to work out the velocity, we have to integrate the acceleration with respect to t. So uh, to work out the velocity, we are integrating t minus 3 with respect to t, term by term. So if we integrate t, we get a half t squared, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. And if we integrate minus 3, we get minus 3t plus c, the constant of integration. Now in the question, it clearly says that when t is equal 0, v is equal 4. These are the boundary conditions. We can substitute this into here to work out c. So v equal 4, and then substitute t equal 0. So we've got a half in bracket 0 squared minus 3 in bracket 0 plus c. So we can clearly see that 4 is equal c. Therefore, the velocity equation will be a half t squared minus 3t plus 4. Ladies and gents, this completes part A of the exam style question. Let's move on to part B. So in part B, we want to find the values of t when p is instantaneously at rest. Okay, so how do we do part B? We have that p is at rest. This implies that the velocity v of p has to equal 0. Now we've got the velocity equation, which is a half t squared minus 3t plus 4. So a half t squared minus 3t plus 4 has to equal 0. We need to solve this quadratic equation. So if I solve this, I get t equal 2 seconds, t equal 4 seconds. Part C, the distance between the two points at which P is instantaneously at rest. Okay, now to work out the distance, or you could say displacement S, we have to integrate the velocity. So S is given by the integral of a half T squared minus 3T plus 4 with respect to T. So now I'm going to do term by term integration, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So the first term integrates to 1 over 6 t to the power 3. Second term integrates to minus 3 over 2 t to the power 2. And the third term integrates to 4 t plus c, the constant of integration. Okay, now what we want to do is work out the distance between the two points at which p is instantaneously at rest. Now we know that p is at rest when t is equal 2 and when t is equal 4. We're going to substitute t equal 2 into the s equation. So when t is equal 2, s is equal 10 over 3 plus c. Now we're going to substitute t equal 4 into the s equation. So when t is equal 4, s is equal 8 over 3 plus c. Right, so we want the distance between the two points at which p is instantaneously at rest. So we're going to take the top minus the bottom. So we've got 10 over 3 plus c, take away 8 over 3 plus c. 
So if I subtract the two, I know that the C's cancel out and I've got 10 over 3 minus 8 over 3, which is basically 2 over 3 meters. Okay, so in part C, the distance between the two points at which P is instantaneously at rest is 2 over 3 meters. That there completes exam style question 1. Let's have a look at exam style question 2. A particle P moves along a straight line such that at time t seconds, t is greater than or equal to 0. After leaving the point O on the line, the velocity v meters per second of P is modelled as v equals 7 minus 2t in brackets multiplied by t plus 2 in brackets. Part A, find the value of t at the instant when P stops accelerating. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. So what we have is that when P stops accelerating, this implies that the acceleration of P is equal to zero. Now to work out the acceleration, we have to differentiate the velocity. So let's start by writing down the velocity equation, which is seven minus two T in brackets, multiplied by T plus two in brackets. We need to expand this before we differentiate it. So the velocity V is given by seven times T, which is seven T, seven times two, which is 14, minus two T times T is minus two T squared, and minus 2t times 2 is minus 4t. So if I simplify this, I get v equal minus 2t squared, 7t minus 4t is plus 3t, and then we've got plus 4t. Now we can work out the acceleration equation. So the acceleration is given by dv over dt. So differentiate term by term, you get the first term, which differentiates to minus 4t, the second term which differentiates to plus 3 and the third term differentiates to 0. So we have that P stops accelerating which means that A is equal 0. So minus 4T plus 3 is equal to 0. Therefore T is equal to 3 over 4 seconds. At this time the particle P stops accelerating. Let's have a look at the solution to part B. Find the distance of P from O from the origin from time t equals zero at the instant when p changes its direction of motion. Perfect. Right, what we have is that p changes its direction of motion. What does this imply? Okay, so if I'm the particle p and I move forward, when I change my direction for a split second, my velocity is zero then I'll move the other way, okay? So when P changes its direction of motion, this implies that uh, the velocity for P has to equal zero. So we have that seven minus two T in brackets multiplied by T plus two in brackets has to equal zero. So seven minus two T is equal zero and T plus two is equal zero. Leading on to the solutions, T equals seven over two, T equal minus two. Now time cannot be negative, so we have to accept the positive solution. Right, so we want the distance of P from O at the instant when P changes its direction of motion. Distance is the magnitude of displacement. To find the displacement, we have to integrate the velocity with respect to T. We are working out the area between the velocity curve and the horizontal axis. So to better understand part B, I'm going to draw a velocity time graph. Right, so we have that when v is 0, the times are minus 2 and 7 over 2. Okay, when t is equal 0, the v intercept is going to be, so if I plug in t equals 0, I get v equal 14. So here is my quadratic graph. The vertical axis represents v in meters per second, and the horizontal axis represents t in seconds. The coefficient of t squared for the velocity equation is minus 2, so we have a negative quadratic upside down u shape. And uh, we're only looking at the sketch for t is greater than or equal 0. So my curve will look something like this. That there uh, is your t intercept, which is 7 over 2. This is the origin. And over here, the v-intercept is 14. Right. 
We want to find the distance of P from O at the instant when P changes its direction of motion. Okay, so we're looking at T is greater than or equal zero because we're from the origin all the way up until T is less than or equal to seven over two at the instant when we change our direction of motion. Okay, so from zero to seven over two, we're working out S. So we're integrating the velocity from 0 to 7 over 2. Basically, we're calculating the area under the velocity curve bounded by the horizontal axis from 0 to 7 over 2. OK, so let's do this. So our s is equal, square brackets, lower limit is 0, upper limit is 7 over 2. We have to integrate the velocity. So we're integrating this term by term. The first term integrates to minus 2 over 3, t cubed. The second term integrates to 3 over 2, t squared. And the final term, ladies and gents, integrates to 14t. OK, so we can substitute the upper limit. So substitute t equals 7 over 2. If we do this, we get 931 over 24. Take away, substitute the lower limit, t equals 0. We get 0. OK, so if we subtract the two values, our answer is 931 over 24 metres. So the distance of P from O at the instant when P changes its direction of motion, ladies and gents, it is 931 over 24 metres. That there completes exam study question 2. Moving on to exam study question 3. A particle P moves along a straight line. At time t seconds, the velocity v meters per second of P is modelled as v equal 10t minus t squared minus k. For the restriction, t is less than or equal to 0, where k is a constant. Part A, find the acceleration of P at time t seconds. Let's have a look at the solution to part A. Now we know that the acceleration is given by differentiating the velocity with respect to time. So we are going to differentiate the velocity equation term by term. The first term differentiates to 10, so we've got a equal 10. Second term differentiates to minus 2t. And the third term, minus k, differentiates to 0 because k is a constant. So we've got that the acceleration is 10 minus 2t meters per second per second. Let's have a look at part b of the question. The particle is instantaneously at rest when t is equal 6. Find the other value of t when p is instantaneously at rest. OK, so we have that when t is equal 6, v is equal 0. The particle is at rest, which means that the velocity has to be 0. So let's substitute this into the velocity equation. So we've got uh, 0 equal 10 multiplied by 6 minus 6 squared minus k. OK, so if we simplify this, we get 0 is equal 24 minus k. And so k has to equal 24. Now we're going to put k equal 24 back into the velocity equation. So the complete velocity equation will be v equal 10t minus t squared minus 24. Now we want to find the other value of t when p is instantaneously at rest. We know that p is at rest when t is equal 6. What is that of the t value? Well, basically, we have to solve v equal 0. So we've got 10t minus t squared minus 24 equal 0. We've got a quadratic equation. If I solve this, I get t equal 6, t equal 4. So the other t value at which the particle p is at rest will be t equal 4. OK, so that there is the other time at which the particle P is at rest. This completes part B of the question. Let's move on to part C. Find the total distance travelled by P in the interval T is more than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 6. To better understand this question, I'm going to start by sketching the velocity time graph. OK. So when T is equal 0, what is V equal to? What is the V-intercept? 
Well, if I substitute t equals zero into the velocity equation, I can see that I'll get v equal minus 24. So that is the v intercept. Now let's work out the t intercepts. This is calculated when v is equal zero. So we have 10t minus t squared minus 24 equals zero. If I solve this, which I've done over here, I get t equal four, t equal six. The coefficient of t squared is minus one. So we've got a negative quadratic upside down U shape. Let's sketch the graph. The vertical axis is your V in meters per second, and the horizontal axis is T in seconds. Okay, so the V intercept is minus 24. We've got a negative quadratic, so the graph will look something like that. For T is greater than or equal zero because time can't be negative. Uh, the T intercepts are four and six. So that there, ladies and gents, is the velocity time graph for the particle P. Right, what we want to work out is the total distance travelled by P in the interval T is greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to six. Now distance is the magnitude of displacement. To get the displacement, we have to integrate the velocity with respect to time. So we're working out the area under the velocity curve bounded by the horizontal axis. Okay, so four, t is greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to six. What is the distance given by? Well, we can see that from the interval zero to six, the area between the curve and the horizontal axis will be this area plus this area here. Okay, so we've got um, that area which is underneath the horizontal axis, it will be a negative area, but we take the magnitude, the absolute value. So the absolute value integral of V dt, okay, from the limits zero to four, plus uh, this area here, which is above the horizontal axis, it will be positive, so we don't need to take absolute values. So plus the integral from four to six of V dt. Okay, so let's have a look at this. We've got S equal absolute value. Let's put square brackets in. Uh, we're going to integrate the velocity equation term by term. Okay, this one here, term by term. Add one to the power, divide by the new power. So the first term integrates to 5t squared. The second term integrates to minus 1 over 3t cubed. And the final term integrates to minus 24t. And we're taking limits 0 to 4. Plus, square bracket, we've integrated the velocity, so it's just that one there. We've got 5t squared minus 1 over 3 t cubed minus 24t, taking limits 4 to 6. Right, so I'll just continue here. So s is equal to, substitute uh, t equal 4 into here. This will give us minus 112 over 3. Take away, substitute t equal 0 into here. That will give us 0. Okay, plus Substitute um, t equals 6 into here, that will give us minus 36, take away. Substitute t equal 4 into here, that will give us minus 112 over 3. So we have that s is equal, the absolute value of this is basically the positive value. So that would just be 112 over 3, plus simplifying this gives us 4 over 3. Okay, therefore, the total distance travelled by P in the interval T is more than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 6, will be 116 over 3 metre. That there, ladies and gents, completes exam study question 3 and this teaching video 11.4 using integration. If you found this teaching video useful, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, turn on your notification bell so that you receive notifications every time I post a new teaching video.